motorcyclist on the runway. Uh, What's he gonna do? Oh, is it still the camp as well? Yeah. Wow. Well good morning again from Nairobi in Kenya and today I'm taking a very special flight indeed. I'm flying today with an organisation called Mission Aviation Fellowship or MAF for short. MAF are an organisation that provide aviation services to humanitarian organisations all around the world as well as connecting some really remote indigenous communities. Today they've invited me along to go and see the work that they're doing here in Kenya and South Sudan first hand. The first step today was to meet with Ryan, who heads things up for MAF in Kenya and South Sudan, to give us an overview of today's mission. Yeah. Um, so you guys will depart and head off uh, almost north, straight north, uh, past Mount Kenya. This mountain. Hopefully you'll get a view of it this morning. And then continue going a bit uh, northeast up to Marsabit. Drop off some passengers. From there, you're going to a short hop across to this little remote place called Kagi. And then from there, you're going to head up to Lokochogia, which is right up here in the northwestern corner of Kenya on the South Sudan border. And then from there, you'll pick up some passengers and come all the way back down the Rift Valley, all the way back to Nairobi. We have uh, seven caravans. This one's about to get a new engine put on. Yeah, based over here. Two of them are in Kenya. Yeah. And the other five are based up in South Sudan. Okay. But yeah. we do all their maintenance here, so they come and go. Right, yeah. And they operate under the same uh, AOC. Next, it was time to head down to the aircraft and meet my pilot for the day, Sam. Thank you. That is approved fellow 130 QNH 1022. Start approved 130 QNH 1022, MAF 1. Correction, we want four winds zero six zero zero five knots. Clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff runway one four. Mass one. Up, uh, kilo. Kilo confirmed two six and two. Two. I confirmed. I get a kilo next yeah. report breaking the left Kenneth one zero two two. Our first flight today then was to the town of Marsabit in northern Kenya. Flight time for this leg was 1 hour 51 minutes, cruising at 13,000 feet. So we're heading out to Marsabit today. Uh, it's one of our uh, regular shuttles. Um, it's up at a place called Marsabit County. It's sort of the capital of the county. It's quite a dry area, uh, which you'll see, but Marsabit itself is on a hill and it attracts oh, yeah. quite strange weather. So quite often it could be, you know, sky clear everywhere and Marsabit will just be cloud and cloud. <laughs> um, so it's nice and cool up there and we service a few NGOs, a few church groups uh, that work there. Flying north we got a great view of Mount Kenya, the second highest mountain in Africa and one of the only places in the world to see snow so close to the equator. So how long have you been flying for MAF then um, Sam? Yeah, I've been flying for MAF for five years. Fantastic. I joined them in 2015 and yeah, I've been fortunate to serve in a few programs. I started my time with them in Arnhem Land. They have a program in okay. the Northern Territory of Australia. In Australia, yeah. The remote wow. Aboriginal community. So I flew there for 18 months and I got transferred um, to South Sudan. Kenya, and I was there for just short of two years. And then incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Traffic 1800, MAF 1, Charlie 208, we're Wilson from Marsabit, level 130. Uh, we're currently one, two miles north of Old Jogi. And we're estimating March to the time 0724. Okay, folks, we have started our descent into Mars a bit. We should be on the ground in approximately 20 minutes. Please make sure your seat belts are on and fastened for landing. Thank you. Uh, Marsabit traffic, map one for two, uh, one mile to the south, inbound, um, 
As we got closer to Mossabit, it soon became clear that Mossabit's famous localised weather wasn't going to make it too easy for us to get in today. Too low terrain. Too low. Not looking too promised, no. No. That's all right, we stuck around to the north. 500. The cloud base was just a few hundred feet above the ground today, so getting in involved skirting around the gaps in the cloud to make an approach to the small airstrip at Marsabit. Marsabit traffic, mass one, joining a long left hand downwind runway 13. Marsabit. There we go. Oh, uh, yeah. So just a dirt runway here then, yeah? Uh, it's actually tarmac oh, is it? sealed, okay. yeah. So to be honest, it's quite rough. There's big potholes at one end, oh, yeah. and then <laughs> the landing threshold. Uh, it's actually quite rough. And you can yeah. see there's stock on the runway. Bunch of cars, so we'll probably land a bit deeper. I don't really want to go. Oh, yeah. But the cars on the runway, it looks like they've been cleared. Yeah. Traffic. Minimum. Minimum. Runway is clear. Continuing. Let's go just beyond those potholes. Arriving in Marsabit, it seemed that half the town had come out to watch our arrival. The airstrip usually sees just one flight a week with MAF, but since Covid hit they haven't even had that. The terminal building at Marsabit could perhaps be described as lacking a few facilities, but with the number of flights it serves it wasn't too crowded. So here on the ground in Mossabit in northern Kenya and Mossabit's a tiny village right up here um, in the middle of nowhere pretty much um, served by MAF. We've just dropped off a few humanitarian workers here uh, who are working for a charity out here. Uh, we've got a few minutes here on the ground at this really awesome little airstrip in Mossabit before we head on to our next stop. With the lack of flights, the locals use the airstrip as a road, meaning that the aircraft have to dodge all sorts of traffic and pedestrians on the runway, a fact that would become even more evident as we took off shortly after for our next leg. The cattle that had been grazing on the runway earlier had been moved to the other end of the runway, so at least we wouldn't have to worry about cows on the runway. Motorbikes, however, would be a slightly different matter. There's a motorcyclist on the runway, uh, what's he going to do? There we go, there we he's go. seen us. <laughs> The next flight then took us first to the tiny village of Kargi, where we had to do a low approach and go around to inspect the runway after some recent rain. From there it was onwards to Loki Chukyo on the border with South Sudan. Flight time for this leg was 1 hour and 43 minutes, cruising at 12,000 feet. Don't sink. Don't sink. Oh, I was just saying that. The grind's disappearing below us. Yeah. Kharki is a tiny village 50 miles to the west of Marsabit, home to around 6,000 members of the Rendili tribe. 
Math worked with an aid organisation in Kargi to provide a health clinic there to assess patients before they go off to Nairobi for treatment. And if anyone needs um, um, like surgery, I'll basically write them, give them a reference and invite them to the hospital for free surgery. So they have to find their own way to Nairobi. Right. If they make it, they'll conduct the surgery for nothing, which is pretty cool. Wow. Yeah, we've worked with this team numerous times and just go out and do these clinics. And and I think most of the people take it up, like the yeah. majority of the people from what I gather actually go to Nairobi, so it's, it's cool. That's good. And it's, it's much needed. So we'll play a game here, eh? and I'll be, I'll have to be honest, sometimes I can't even find the airstrip. <laughs> so if you can... Well, let, I can see let, a town, so let, presumably that's Cargi. Uh-huh, so let's, that's Cargi, right? So let's see if we can find the airstrip. That's Cargi, so we'll just do a right hand circuit to do a little pass over it, eh? Ah, I think that's... Not much in the way of duty free. <laughs> no. Starts half width and it opens up. Oh, That's Cargi, it's one of our places we like to come and <laughs> definitely one of the more remote communities. They don't have a Hilton here, presumably. <laughs> no, I stayed at this school. I see these huts right down here? Uh, yeah, That's yeah. where I stayed last time. Ah. Uh, actually pretty good. I bet it's so peaceful down there. Yeah, it's pretty quiet. Pretty amazing st uh, sky at night, eh? Yeah, I bet. It's just amazing stars. Runway inspection at Kargi complete, it was time to head across to Loki Chokyo. So how do you guys stay in touch with like head office and stuff then, or with operations while you're out here in the middle of like nowhere? Yeah, we do have... Uh... HF, uh -huh. which is kind of being phased out. Like, we, we won't be able to I think it's still a regulatory requirement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as far as our operation of it, we don't really use it much. So we have an app, we have yeah. tracking software, V2 okay. Track. Um, we have an app that goes with it. Uh, okay. And basically... Um, Gives like a real-time feedback to yeah, uh, every, my every couple of minutes they get a ping. Yeah. And then we basically communicate via then. So they're tracking us real time. Every 30 minutes I give an I'm OK. Yeah. Uh, and my own. Uh, historically, we used to do every 30 minutes position report on this yeah. GPS coordinates. Just read this off. Uh, but not anymore because they're tracking us real time. Yeah, it's kinda, yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's much yeah. more convenient. Yeah, so we do, we do keep in touch. We get the way sometimes if they're on to it depends who's on the flight following, but they do give us sort of updates on the weather. If uh, okay. But in South Sudan, a lot because places are very remote and it's all sat phone, and normally the only point of contact is the our partner organisation. So like whoever that is, the NGO, the ch church mission, whatever. They're our point of contact, so we call them in the morning. How's the security? How's the weather? Right, yeah. And I had it on several occasions where, yeah, yeah, runway's fine, come and pick us up. And I got there and the runway was literally underwater. Like, yeah. and they just, they obviously just wanted to go home. Go home yeah. And they didn't really get that you can't land the plane without floats on water. Fortunately today the weather was slightly better in this part of the world and we got some great views of Lake Takana, the world's largest alkaline lake. You've been on eight to any aircraft uh, that's two with Nairobi on 
As we got closer to the South Sudan border, we flew over Kakuma, home to one of the world's largest refugee camps. Kakuma is home to over 184,000 refugees, predominantly from nearby South Sudan, who fled their homes due to the civil war. The camp has its own airstrip to bring in aid to the refugees and sees regular flights from Nairobi to bring in food to give the residents the minimal amount of food needed, as well as flights by MAF to bring aid workers to and from the camp. The scale of Kakuma was truly humbling, it just goes on for miles and the camera does it no justice at all. So this is like the um, the emergency one, so uh, the makeshift one. Yeah. And then they transfer people the to the, 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 main, the more permanent or semi-permanent one. Leaving Kakuma behind, we started our descent into Loki Chogyo. Loki is the first town on the Kenyan side of the South Sudan border and a major hub for the aid work going on in the area. Well, Math one uh, joins right hand down with uh, zero nine. And the boat next standing finals. Winds are zero eight zero nine knots. QNH one zero one four. One zero one four next final zero nine math one. Half one with you visual. Clear land on zero nine. Wind zero eight zero seven knots. Clear land runway zero nine or math one. Thank you. Five hundred. Despite its rather remote location, Loki Chogi is a plane spotter's paradise with dozens of old aircraft in storage all over the airfield, including this old Hawker Sidley Andover built in the 1960s. So on the ground here in Loki Chokyo in the far northwest of Kenya, we're about 20 miles from the border with South Sudan, which is that way. Um, so it's quite a small airport, but it's bigger than some of the ones we've seen today. It's got a little cafe even here. Um, and Loki Chokyo is effectively the first big town this side of the border with South Sudan. It's about 20 miles from the border. So refugees coming in from South Sudan hit Loki Chokyo first and then head on down to the refugee camps at um, Kakuma like we saw on the way in here. I mean, these scales are incredible. It's 40 miles from here to Kakuma by foot uh, for these people and 20 miles even from the border in South Sudan before you've even got to the rest of it. So. There's naturally a lot of aid organisations up here um, doing work, some fantastic work up here in the uh, border region with South Sudan. MAF bring in a shuttle flight about once or twice a week from down in Nairobi with um, the aid workers on bringing cargo backwards and forwards as well. So all pretty cool stuff that they're doing and brilliant work that these guys are doing here in Kenya. Um, just incredible really. Lockheed Airport, well there's not really much to see. We've got a little cafe over here, a duty-free store for people coming in. I mean, the only international flights come from Juba in South Sudan. Um, and that's pretty much all we've got going for us here um, at Lockheed Airport. So we're just waiting for the passengers to come across, then we're gonna get back on board and head back to Nairobi. Flight time about three hours long. All the same So I figured I'd come and have a look in the back of the MAF to wait while well, we haven't got any passengers on board. And it's pretty much, um, there's only room for six passengers in the back here they carry, um, although they can presumably add extra seats in down here. But effectively they use most of this space for cargo storage so they can bring loads of cargo and freight out to these little remote towns and communities. MAF Cessna caravans have these gravel guards fitted to the undercarriage which stop gravel and dirt from flicking up and hitting the aircraft when landing on remote gravel and dirt airstrips. 
Before too long it was time to jump back on board and start the long three hour flight back to Nairobi. Yeah, MAF-1, uh, request start to Nairobi, level 130, we have three on board. MAF-1, start is approved, on the QNH 1013. Start approved, uh, 1013, MAF-1. One on the turn, clear kick off with the right hand, the wind zero nine zero at one one. Kick off uh, on the turn, with the right hand turn after departure, mass one. The last leg today then was a 2 hour 41 minute flight back down the Rift Valley to Nairobi, cruising at 13,000 feet. Mark 1, runway 07, 060 at 13, not yet to land. Midland, runway 07, Mark 1. Arriving back into Nairobi, the weather had brightened up a bit from the morning and we made a beautiful approach and landing into Wilson, ending our day with a lovely smooth touchdown on Wilson's runway 07 a little over 6 hours after we left. Mark 1, where Charlie 129? Charlie 1219, thanks. So back once again in Nairobi at Wilson Airport and oh my goodness what an absolutely incredible day that was today. Flying with MAF up to the north of Kenya to Marsabit and Lokichogyo it was just absolutely incredible. To be able to go and see the varied landscape of Kenya um, and see the sites of Kenya that a lot of Kenyan people haven't even seen before um, was just incredible and to go and see the villages up in Master bit as well and in Lucky Chogyo as well. It was just phenomenal and what a great opportunity to go and see some of this country. Um, I'd like to say thank you so much to Sam, my pilot, uh, for an incredible day today. Also to Ryan who heads things up here down in Nairobi and also to everybody behind the scenes at MAF who have made this happen. Um, I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much guys. It's been an absolutely inc incredible opportunity. And thanks as well to MAF for the incredible work that you do to support these humanitarian organisations and bringing this air service to these tiny remote indigenous communities, not just in Kenya and South Sudan, but all around the world they've got operations. If you want to find out more information about them, check out their website, by the way. I'll put the link down on the screen below. In the meantime as well, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to let me know what you thought to this video down in the comments below. Also hit that subscribe button because I've got loads more stuff like this coming up over the next sort of few weeks. I've got some incredible footage coming from Africa. You are not going to want to miss it. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the little jingly bell thing as well, apparently. That's what everybody else tells you to do, so that's what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> in the meantime, as always, Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.